And Susan, this dramatically long standoff ending when that gunman is found dead inside the home from an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. SWAT also finding a high-powered rifle inside that home. The weapon apparently used to fire at neighbors, to fire at law enforcement. And that all ratcheted the threat level here up to very high, very serious. And that's why the Sheriff's Department says it took just so long to finally end this standoff. Listen. The extreme threat that that suspect was putting on the community, uh, we had to, to slow down our operation. We had to make sure that everything was done perf to perfection and to the most utmost safety. And in that process, it takes time. In this case, the dramatic Valinda SWAT standoff ends almost two days, some 48 hours after it all began. At 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, he was still uh, cussing and sending text messages about uh, his ability to want to put harm on us and our personnel. And now we're getting our first up-close look at the target of the dramatic standoff, the house, or, or what's left of it now, after SWAT rips holes in the roof to use cameras to spot the gunman. He's found shot dead inside with a high-powered rifle nearby, the one supposedly used to fire at will, keeping SWAT officers at bay. They received uh, potentially over 100 rounds of ammunition fired at them. We uh, took the opportunity to use our armored vehicles to put those in front of the uh, target and the community to try to absorb that threat so it didn't get out any further than the contained area. That forced the evacuation of some 10 families from their homes. They're all in the line of fire. I must have heard like 10 uh, shots, but then I hear 10 more, five more. It must have been like 30 or 40 shots. Then, late Sunday, it finally ends with a cloud of extra strength pepper spray, a last tactical measure used to make sure the gunman is no longer a threat. We were using that uh, to make to disrupt his ability to shoot straight, in theory, and make his environment uncomfortable enough so he'd surrender to us. That has relieved neighbors clapping. <laughs> neighbors applauding as that standoff ends safely. Some upset it kept them out of their homes for so long. It's depressing for the fact that one person, you know, has made everybody else's life turn upside down for the fact that they can't go home right now. And now live, it's been a surreal scene here, really, all the last couple of days, and particularly the last few hours. L.A. County sheriffs still have this neighborhood blocked off. They're collecting evidence inside the home itself. They're also working this late hour, they tell me, on repopulating, a term they use, getting those 10 families or so back in their homes. A lot of those folks telling us that they've been sleeping in their cars the last couple of nights, just waiting for a chance to get back home. Looks like that finally be happening in the next few hours. For now, we are live here. Linda, back to you, Susan. We go.